Lesson 9.1, Word Problem Solving, Compare Fractions. When we're solving word problems, there's a few steps we need to make sure we are aware of. The first thing is, do we need to find? We need to understand the problem. We need to know what it's asking of us. Number two, what information will we use? We need to circle, underline, or identify important information that we're going to use. Number three, how will we use that information we found? We need to pick a strategy to solve the problem, and we need to know which operation sign to use. Are we going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? And then, we're going to solve the problem and check our answer. We want to know if our answer makes sense. We can use the strategy ACT IT OUT to solve comparison problems. And we can use fraction strips or fraction circles to represent each fraction and compare the models. We can compare the size of the models to each other. And you can go to the Joanne School Facebook page image section for fraction strips that you can print, copy, paste, and cut out and use for your homework. So remember, this is the sign right here for less than. Do you see it right here? And a half of something is less than a whole thing, isn't it? So we have a less than sign there. This is the greater than sign. One is greater than half. And of course, you know is equal to, a half is equal to a half. And the less than and greater than symbols open towards the greater number. So whichever is the greater number, that's the side that's open more. Like here, 1 is greater, so the big side is open to the 1. And on this one, the 1 is greater, so the big side is open to the 1. See that? And this less than symbol kind of looks like a crooked L, doesn't it? For less than, like the L in less. Tala walked two-fourths mile to her friend's house. Then she walked three-fourths mile to her aunt's house. Which distance is shorter? And we can act it out by using fraction strips. So we need to use two-fourths and three-fourths. We need to know that they're asking us which one is shorter. We have two one-fourth fraction strips, so that's two-fourths. That's the distance she walked to her friend's house. And we have three one-fourth fraction pieces. That's the distance she walked to her aunt's house, three-fourths mile. And we can see the three-fourths is much bigger, isn't it? It's another fourth, isn't it? So two-fourths is less than three-fourths. Because the three-fourths is the greater fraction, we have the big open part facing the greater fraction. So the walk to her, the walk to her friend's house was the shorter distance. It's very important that we make sure we answer what it was asking. Which distance is shorter? The two-fourths to her friend's house. When the denominators are the same, we can compare fractions by their numerators. This has got a denominator of 4, and so does this one. So we can just look at the numerator, 2 and 3. Which one's bigger? 3. That means 3 fourths is greater than 2 fourths. See? 2 fourths is less than 3 fourths. Here, they both have a denominator 5, so we can use the numerator to compare them. 3 is less than 4, so 3 fifths is less than 4 fifths. So when the denominators are the same, the fractions have the same size unit fractions. Remember, a unit fraction has a 1 for a numerator. So here we have a unit fraction, a unit fraction, and a unit fraction. It's 1 eighth, 1 eighth, and 1 eighth. That's 3 eighths. The denominators are the same, so we use the numerators to compare them. 3 is less than 4. See, we have 3 of them here and 4 of them there. That's because the denominators are the same. Here, we've got one-tenth unit fractions. We've got three of them here and two of them here. So three-tenths is greater than two-tenths. We'll talk about this more in the next lesson, too. 
When the denominators are different from each other, the sizes of each unit fractions are different. So here we have a denominator 2, and here we have a denominator 3. See how the unit fractions are different sizes? And when the denominator is 4, it's a different size than that one. And do you notice that the larger the denominator number becomes, the smaller the piece is? Do you see that? We get to 1 12th, it's a very tiny little piece, but 1 half that has a 2 for a denominator is a much bigger piece. That's because the whole thing was only cut into two parts, where this whole thing was cut into 12 parts, and that's just one of them. Emma ate 3 fourths of her pizza. Tim ate 3 eighths of his pizza. So they each had their own pizza, didn't they? Who ate the most pizza? Well, we can act it out by using fraction circles. So these are fraction circles. A whole one would make a whole circle. See? Emma has a fourth, a fourth, and a fourth. That's three fourths that she ate. And Tim has an eighth, an eighth, and an eighth for three eighths that he ate. And the fraction circles will help us compare the sizes of the fractions easier. So what do we need to find? We need to find who ate more pizza. And what information do we need to use? We need the information that Emma ate 3 fourths and Tim ate 3 eighths. And how will we use the information? We can use fraction circles to compare how much they ate. We compare the sizes of the fraction circles for 3 fourths and 3 eighths. And the size of the 3 fourths model is it's larger, it's greater than the size of the 3 eighths model, isn't it? There's a lot more pizza here. If that's how much she ate, that's more than that one, isn't it? So it's greater than the size of the 3 eighths model. We can put a greater than sign here that 3 fourths is greater than 3 eighths. So who ate the most? Emma. Emma ate the most, didn't she? Three-fourths is greater. Maybe they're saving it for later. The rest of it. Lisa's recipe will need one-fourth cup almonds, one-third cup sugar, and one-half cup butter. So which ingredient will Lisa use the least of? That means the smallest amount. And the first thing we need to notice is that it's cup cup and cup, because then we're comparing the same type of measurement. Because what if that said one-fourth teaspoon? Well, a teaspoon is way smaller than a cup, isn't it? So this is one-fourth cup, one-third cup, one-half cup. We can model the problem with fraction strips. One-fourth cup, that's the almonds, it would be a one-fourth fraction piece. One-third cup sugar would be a one-third fraction piece and one half cup butter, we could use a half fraction piece. Then we can just look at them. And which ingredient will Lisa use the least of, the smallest amount of? If you said almonds, you're right. That's the smallest fraction of the three. Out of one fourth, one third, and one half, one fourth is the smallest fraction. It's the least. Lisa is putting icing on 10 cupcakes. And the table shows the fraction of cupcakes iced with each color. Which color did Lisa use on the most cupcakes? So let's take a look at our frequency table here. It's Lisa's cupcakes. We can see this is icing color of pink, yellow, or blue. And the fraction of the cupcakes. There's 10 cupcakes, so 4 tenths, which means 4 out of the 10, was pink, 5 tenths, which means 5 of the 10 were yellow, and 1 tenth, which means 1 of the 10 was blue. If we look at these fractions, because 10 cupcakes is the whole thing, right? It's all of them that would fit in the box that she's making of cupcakes. We add the numerator 4 plus 5, which is 9, plus 1 more is 10, and that equals all 10 cupcakes, 10 tenths, one whole thing of 10 cupcakes, see? So here's one whole, and it's split into 
unit fractions of one-tenth, and there's ten of them. For the pink icing, she had four-tenths. That means she had four of these. That's four out of ten cupcakes were pink. For the yellow icing, it was five of the ten. It was five-tenths. And for the blue, it was only one-tenth, one of the ten. So we can look at these three and tell which one she used the most. It was yellow, wasn't it? Lisa used yellow the most. Did we answer the question, which color did Lisa use the most? Yes, we did. Does it make sense? Yes, because that has the longest fraction bar, doesn't it? Now, we also could have used counters. We could have used 10 counters because there's 10 cupcakes. And we could have pretended that each counter was a cupcake. And 4 tenths, or 4 out of 10, were pink. So we have 4 counters. 5 tenths, or 5 out of 10, were yellow. So we use 5 counters. And 1 tenth, 1 out of 10, was blue. We have 1 counter. And we can see that we have more counters for the yellow. So Lisa used yellow the most. We can write the correct symbol. We can write less than, greater than, equal to in the circle. So we're going to compare one half and one third. One half means one of two equal parts. One third means one of three equal parts. Well, one half would be one of two equal parts. See, there would be two parts and we have one of them. But when we have one of three equal parts, they're cut into smaller pieces because now we have the same size circle, but it's in three pieces instead of two pieces. So we can see that one half is greater than one third. We put the opening, the large opening, towards the larger fraction. We need to compare one third and one fourth. One third is one of three equal parts. One fourth is one of four equal parts. One third means our circle is cut into three parts and we have one of them. One fourth means it's cut into four parts because the denominator is a four and we have one of them. Can you see which one's larger? We can see one third takes up more space. It takes up more area than one fourth, doesn't it? So one third is greater than one fourth. And take a look at this one. These have the same denominator. This is 2 eighths, or 2 of 8 equal parts. This is 3 eighths, or 3 of 8 equal parts. So both circles are cut into eighths. This one has 2 equal parts. This one has 3. We can see that 2 eighths is less than 3 eighths. It takes up less area. It takes up less space, doesn't it? So we're going to put the little side towards the 2 eighths and the big side towards the 3 eighths because 2 eighths is less than 3 eighths. Make sure when you're using the less than greater than symbol that you're using it facing the correct direction. The big opening faces the larger number. We're going to talk about how to compare fractions with the same denominator some more in our next lesson, 9.2. And I hope I'll see you there. Bye.